thousand k's on it the guy said uh, but I put new all new bearings in it uh, new rings honed the bores did the valves and put it all back together and she's now ready to go into the CX 500 single spine frame so um, yeah I'll give you a bit of a look over and just show you what modifications on the motor we've done to be able to uh, do that okay let's have a look at this CX 650 uh, motor the first thing we did was modify the uh, CX500 engine hanger with uh, realigning the center bolt so that uh, it fitted the 650 motor and now it has the CX500 engine hanger. And next thing we did was the radiator. We're using the CX650 radiator and that just involved making new brackets on the side of the radiator to mount to the CX500 engine hanger. Um, the hose from the thermostat, it fits nicely underneath the uh, cross tube of the, of the engine hanger. And um, looking around at the back, I think this guy actually angled the uh, thermostat housing and he had that buggy and um, you can see that it goes under the cross tube quite nice but uh, yeah it's now got the CX650 fan and the sensor on the bottom of the radiator going around to the back checking the counties out it's got the CX500 inlet manifolds and the CX500 carby setup and that was uh, achieved by just widening them out 12 mil with these sleeves and just making new fuel tube making new brackets or just welding a piece in the brackets so yeah you can see the carbies they fit quite nice on the CX650 motor and the last thing we did was the uh, output shaft, which was a piece of cake. That was easy. So we've got a CX500 output shaft on there now. So this motor is now ready to go into the CX500. While we're here uh, looking at uh, the rebuild of the CX650 motor, the other day I read an article on the CX500 forum about the correct way to actually install a head gasket and tension it and um, there is a little bit of a sort of controversy on there between uh, different methods but I guess the first thing really because it is a fairly important area on the bike you don't want a, a head gasket leaking and going into your water or oil now uh, the first thing really is to buy a decent gasket set you know uh, you can't buy the gaskets uh, for a 650 uh, through Honda, they don't have them, but uh, I found a good uh, company uh, called Athena. Um, I'll leave a link in the description for the gasket set that I used. But um, once uh, you go to install the head gasket, um, the first thing you should do, I, I, I think, is to uh, run a tap down the, uh, the threads of the block bolts to make, make sure they're nice and clean because uh, uh, they've been sitting there for a long time and if you've got slightly rusty or dirty threads you're not going to get the correct tension on your, uh, on your head gasket so 
I always run a, a tap down my threads. Um, I clean my head bolts up on a, a, a wire wheel, uh, make sure both threads are, are nice and clean. And I coat my head gasket with a copper gasket spray. And I do put uh, a little bit of lube on the threads of the head bolts. Uh, I think Murray F uh, on the forum said that putting uh, grease on the threads you could over tension, which is theoretically right, I, I think. You possibly could. Uh, but uh, for me, I just want a little bit of uh, grease on there to look after those, those shreds and I tension to uh, 50 uh, Newton meters in the correct pattern. So yeah, there's something to think about there guys with when you are installing a head gasket, don't go for some cheap head gasket because it's only going to give you a heartache possibly further down the road. So I'll leave a link in the description to that article and you can make up your own mind uh, which way you should go.